Welcome everybody, Chris Petri here. We're going to actually have a great time doing this wonderful tutorial. We're doing a Venice scene. We have a gondola. We have the captain of the ship on this gondola. We have some gorgeous, beautiful arched doorways, beautiful windows, shutters, washes, beautiful, colorful washes, warm and cool everywhere. We have some peach colors, some greens, some browns, some dark blues and blacks mixed in here. We have the gorgeous water reflections in the uh, bottom of this painting. We have so much fun things to do here. This is an Extreme beginner series painting, so this means if you're just starting out, the perfect painting for you. We're going to discuss everything and show everything here, every detail from start to finish, from your preliminary sketch to get your sketch down onto your paper, and then eventually you're going to go in and do your washes. And we're going to cover everything here step by step, slowly as we go through, so you'll kind of really be able to follow along and uh, complete this gorgeous painting. And if it really turns out well, you're going to put it in a frame. You're going to put a mat on it and frame it. If it doesn't come out as great as you like, you can try it again or two or three times, and eventually it'll look great. You'll be able to do a, a gorgeous um, uh, rendition of this, put it into a frame, of course, and mat it and frame it and have it for yourself. You can put it on your own a wall in your studio or in your home somewhere. You could also give it as a gift to someone uh, or you could put it into a competition or a gallery showing. So it's up to you. You're the artist and if you're just starting out you can still create wonderful paintings like this. Have a lot of fun. We do lots of interesting washes on this painting and we cover again every detail from start to finish so you don't have to worry. Um, you'll be able to um, complete this one and really have a fun time too as well as we go. Okay, so let's get started. We'll start doing the drawing in just a second. Be right back. All right, we just saw the finished painting. Let's get right into it here. First thing we're going to do is just sketch out our um, beautiful uh, Venice uh, scene here. It's one of those gorgeous uh, waterways with some boats, some doorways going into some apartment buildings and uh, homes along the uh, waterway. Let's uh, start out by using a, uh, I'm going to use a 6B pencil, and I'm just going to start getting the, the basic shapes of the archways, the arch doorways. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do a, a um, loose sketch here. And this is an Extreme Beginners uh, series painting. So when we're working on um, these style paintings, we're going to right away uh, key in on what technique and method we're using. We're going to use the glazing technique, actually, for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the pencil sketch in first. Then we're going to go over this entire uh, watercolor paper with um, a light wash. We're going to give it like a nice light golden color. And then on top of that, we'll do some, you know, other washes that are going to get darker and darker as we go. So we're going to do a first really light wash of like a golden color. Then after that, we're going to start moving into the middle tones, some darker tones, and then we'll finish off with any details we need to. So here again, I'm just going to focus on the, the windows and doors in this Venice waterway. So we're going to just capture some, some lines here. And we have the, we're going to have some of the um, reflections here of this doorway. There's a wall here. So we're going to put this wall in here. There's a fence along the wall. 
We'll put that there. We'll put the fence there and the wall here. Then we're going to come over here and then there's a a break in the wall here. And it goes back a little bit over here. We're going to do another archway here, an arch doorway. Here there's a gondola. So we're going to do that. And we're going to do the reflection, just a little bit of an indication of a reflection underneath the gondola, like that. And then we have some more windows here, and then no need to get too... We're just trying to get the basic shapes of things here. So these are rectangular and square shapes windows, basically two squares here, and then a rectangle for the shutters, like that. So two shutters and then two squares for the window. Same over here. Two squares and a rectangle for each shutter. Like so. Then we have another wall here, another uh, wall that's uh, on the side or over on this section here. And then there's some other subsequent walls that are terraced down here. And then there's another doorway here. Put a little bit of shadow under there. We'll put a little bit of shadows under the arched doorways. Lights coming from this direction. So let's, as a good habit, we always try to put our light insignia over here. go. We have our spotlight which represents sunlight coming across the picture this way. So any shadows are going to be uh, in reference to this light source coming from the right hand side coming across. And we'll do another window over here like so. So I'm just kind of blocking in my windows and I'm not getting too tremendously fussy. Just trying to capture where everything is. Most of this is going to be lots of water, lots of paint. We're going to have fun with this. You're going to, as an extreme beginner, you're really going to enjoy this because it's mostly having fun with the paints and the water. That's why it's watercolor and that's why it's so fun. And that's why I know you always come back to my channel and have fun here and enjoy the paintings we do because we use lots of water, lots of paint. And, uh, you know, sometimes, yeah, we do some technical paintings. You know, we do that as well here on my channel, but also too, we sometimes just take it easy and just say, hey, let's have some fun with the paints and the water and all of that. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to do a little more shadowing just to remember where my shadows are on my windows here. So we have some shadows on the windows and um, we might have some darks up here. And then we're going to have some darks here. So another, again, reflection down here of this arch doorway. And as you can see, I think we have a good basic sketch here. Once you have this basic sketch in, which is fine, and also remember, at the beginning of the video, I always show you the finished painting so you can kind of see what everything's going to look like right at, right at the beginning. And then you work through the whole painting and this whole process here on this tutorial. And then by the end of the video and tutorial, you'll see the finished painting as well at the end. So you can pause the video at either the beginning or the end and work from that. So we're going to work right from this here. Either at the beginning, you can pause the video and take a picture of it or a screen capture or just hit pause and work from that, or you can wait till the end of the video and do the same thing. Or just paint along as we go. So this is the sketch. We're good for the time being right now, and we're just gonna get our first wash on. So we're gonna take a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll mix up our first wash, which is gonna be a light glazing over the entire paper, okay? So we'll be right back. And I always mention, please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, 
at this point. Right on the right hand side uh, here b below the uh, screen you'll see a subscribe button. You hit that subscribe button and all it does is it just YouTube will just alert you the next time I've made a new video, which might be next week, or, you know, um, usually I, I'm always creating uh, videos each week, so it'll just alert you. So when you open up YouTube the next time, maybe next week or the week after, you'll see my videos there, the new ones that I've just created. So I might have one or two new videos. And uh, this way you don't lose me, because I know some people have mentioned that they were following a few of my videos and then they hadn't subscribed and they couldn't find me again because they had a hard time remembering my name or something like that. So always if you subscribe, you're just, you'll, you'll be uh, alerted f uh, of the new videos I'm creating. And as well, you can always go into your subscriptions button on your YouTube channel and you'll find me there too. So you won't lose me if you're actually subscribed. So really it's just like a link to me. Nothing more than that. You don't get any emails or phone calls or anything like that. It's just YouTube will alert you when I have new videos and you'll also, I'll be stored in your subscription button on your YouTube channel. So if you want to look at who you've subscribed to, if you click on that button, you'll see I'll be in that list when you subscribe. That's about it. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're moving right along. We are going to actually mix up some preliminary wash, our first wash for this painting. And we said we're going to do like a yellow ochre, light yellow ochre over the whole painting. Maybe we'll add in some orange, some red, maybe a little bit of blue and purple too as well. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just uh, get some fresh clean water. And then here, what I would suggest is uh, on this Extreme Beginner series here, we talk about different brushes we have. So I usually use this brush. This is a um, Princeton Art and Brush Company 3 8 or 5 8 inch uh, flat brush. This works for a lot of um, paintings. So you can use this one most times if you're using or if you're if you're creating a medium sized painting, maybe half of this size painting, you can use this. But for this size painting, this is like probably about a 12 by 14. Uh, I'm going to bump up to a larger brush here, a larger uh, square or flat brush like this. So this is a Da Vinci flat brush. You can get many different style flat brushes. This just happens to be something I have handy in the studio here. But you can use any flat brush um, as long as it's a little bit larger like this because we have a lot of ground to cover here for this first wash. So let's let's try to use a larger brush here. It makes your life a lot easier. So if you can get your um, your uh, arsenal of uh, brushes bumped up to maybe having something this size, which is about an inch, inch and a half, inch and a quarter. Uh, it's 50, oh, 30, it's 30, 30 millimeters, or here it's about an inch. So this is an inch or 30 millimeters. So if you can get something this size, you'll really have an easier time doing a nice, beautiful wash uh, on this style painting. We're, again, we're doing the glazing technique, and that means we're doing uh, glazings of washes, one on top of the next. We're letting each one dry as we go. So this first one's going to be light, and then we're letting it dry 100% for, for an hour or two. Or if you have a blow dryer, you can use a blow dryer and come back after like 10 minutes after you blow dry the, the paper. But it's got to be dry after this first wash. So let's do our first wash. First thing we do is we're just going to simply go in and mix a yellow ochre style wash, which will be orange, brown, and yellow. And you just kind of add a little bit of orange, a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow until you get a color that resembles yellow ochre. That looks pretty good. Then we like to also do um, some purple for warm and cool. So we want to have a warm and cool effect as we're painting this whole first wash. We don't want to just go with warm, which is our yellow ochre, which is a golden color. We want to have a little bit of purple there too. So that's why I added that little bit of purple mixed with a little bit of our yellow ochre too as well. So let's try that. And then also, before we start adding in our color, let's just do a quick light wash of water, clean, fresh water over the page. This will make the color flow better on the paper. So we just add a little light wash. doesn't have to be every single bit of paper. Just get a good bit of clean water on your paper. 
just get it on there. Don't worry. You're having fun here. We're having fun, right? Don't worry. Have fun with your paintings. Just get on the water, fresh, clean water. Then we go over here and get that yellow ochre color. And just put it on any old way. You can do any fun brush strokes you like. As long as you're covering the paper, you're good. And then you add a little bit of that purple color too. Just to kind of keep it modulating a little bit with your color. Not so that it's all kind of one boring yellow ochre color. Let's have a little bit of mix. A little bit of variation in there. Okay. And that is it. See how easy that is? This is our first wash. If you have to mix up a little more orange, yellow, and brown to get your yellow ochre color again, there we go. Mix up a little more quick to finish up the painting, the glaze that we're doing. And this is the first glaze. That's as simple as that. And then from this point, we just let it dry. Maybe a little bit of blue. So I'm going to make a little bit of light blue. Let's put a little bit of that light blue. Cerulean blue, basically. Just in a few spots like that. Just to do a little bit of a, you know, a sparkle of cool in there with all that warm yellow ochre color. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. How good does that look? And that's it. That's all you have to do. Your first glazing is now done. You can take a two hour break or overnight and come back the next day. As long as when we go in the next wash on top of this one, the next glazing, you just have to make sure this is 100% dry, your paper and this wash. So again, you could use a blow dryer and that might take only two or three or four minutes to do that and dry it off and then you can start again. So either way, Either you're taking about an hour break or so, or two hours, or it could even be overnight or a couple days. Or you can use a blow dryer and dry it off quickly, maybe in 10 minutes at most, and then we can start up again. So it's up to you how you want to do it. You're the artist. You're going to basically make your decisions on, you know, what your time, what you have as far as your time goes. What time of day is it you're painting or the morning? Do you have time? Or maybe you're going to be hitting the racks and you're going to come back tomorrow and work on it so and you can just basically wrap up and come back the next day and you'll have a dry paper and you can work on that from that point on. But uh, in any case, I'm going to use a blow dryer and I'm going to take a break for five or ten minutes and then use the blow dryer for a few minutes and get it dry and then we'll start the next uh, glazing over top. Okay? See you in just a sec. Okay, we are back again and we are really excited because we have our first wash completed. It's dry. I used a blow dryer, so I, I, I think I took like a 15 minute break. I sat down, I had a little cup of coffee, I was watching another YouTube video on some news with uh, some weather and things like that. And now um, I, I came back and it was still a little damp, so I used a blow dryer and I pretty much did a little more drying and, it, and now it's perfect. It's got a tiny little buckle, so the paper has a little waviness to it, but it's very minimal. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the paper to be pretty much going back to its nice and flat uh, surface. You don't want to have a lot of buckles in your paper. That means it's still too way too wet to work on. So I, I've waited now and did some blow drying and it's really beautiful. It's perfectly dry. You know, it's maybe a touch damp, but very little. So that's good. That's what we want. You, you don't want to go back onto paper that's damp or wet. It's got to be dry pretty much. So. The next glazing we're going to do over the top of this is going to be a dark glazing. Now what I kind of like to say is there's different uh, people, different artists think differently. You know, maybe some artists might say do your lightest wash first, then go with your medium washes, then go with your darkest dark washes last. My idea is get my lightest wash on first and then go in with my darks next and then my medium washes last and then any touch-ups with lights or darks or whatever. So that's kind of how I do do it. It's most comfortable for me. You do it the way you f you're the artist. You you're an ext if you're you know if you're just get getting started, you're an extreme beginner. You're looking for me to kind of give you guidance. My best guidance is get your first super light wash on first. Let it dry 100% like we have here. Then we'll go in and do some darks. Some, you know, somewhat, you know, medium to dark. Next. Then after that, we can go in and do our medium tones. 
like some shadows and things like that. So you'll see how we work this. Okay, so let's get some darks in here. We're going to use some brown and orange and some reds. So we're going to make some brown, orange, and reds like that. Maybe a touch of black up here just to make it a little darker. So we're trying to make a range, as you can see here, kind of like a nice brick red and then take some of that brick red and put it up here and then add a touch, just a little bit of that dark, some of that black in there to get a little bit more of a rich dark like that. That is going to really be a great mix for what we're doing right now. And then maybe a little orange here too. Orange and yellow. Orange and yellow and red. Some brown. Maybe a touch of blue like that and then some more blue down here we want to have some cool colors too we always want to mix warm and cool so this will be our cool kind of green and blue down this way here and maybe up here too maybe a little bit of green like that okay so we have predominantly dark browns and reds with a little bit of cool colors too some greens and bluish green down here. So that's all you do is you pre-mix your colors. This is a huge benefit. I always mention if you can mix your colors first in your palette over here before you go in and start painting. So what you would do is perhaps you're going to pause your video on the beginning of this video, this tutorial. You might pause right in the beginning when I show you the finished painting or you might watch it all the way through first, pause it at the end of the video when you're kind of seeing everything all completed and then you can kind of see, okay, that's what the colors look like. And then you might, at any given point, either at the end of the video when you see the finished painting or the beginning of the video when you see the finished painting, then you can, if you're going to start drawing and painting, you would maybe get your drawing in first and then hit pause. You might want to go back to the beginning and see the colors that I'm using. Or you can just follow along and mix the colors the way I'm mixing it here. So you're the artist. You know what to do. Whatever's easiest for you. Everyone thinks differently. Everyone has their own methods and process that they like to do. You do whatever you feel is right for you. And you always remember, you can always change things too. Never feel like you're locked into any one thing. So if that makes sense, always give yourself the freedom to change things a little bit as you're working through your processes and your methods as you're working with your paintings and your artwork and your watercolors. So always give yourself that freedom to do something a little different if you want. You can follow what I'm saying, but you can always adjust things too to suit yourself because we're not all the same. Each of us is completely, uniquely different as a person. We all have different talents. We all have different skills with our painting. Some of you are better at drawing. You're having a harder time with painting. Some of you are having more of a struggle with drawing, but you're better at painting. Just try to work along, feel it out. It takes takes time to learn watercolor so don't get stressed just go with the flow try to do the best you can and always remember if a painting goes bad you just put it to the side and you start a new one that's all so here again completely dry paper now after our first light wash of yellow that yellowish golden color with a little bit of blue now we're going in with our darker colors and we're going to start doing our arched doorways here. Wow, look how good that looks. And you can go straight in and get some yellow and golds and things. But I'm using this 5 8 Princeton Art and Brush Company brush. We use this all the time on this Extreme Beginner series, you know that. And if you want to use a different brush than this one, that's fine too. You don't have to use this one. There's the round brushes we have that we use. But and look how easy that is to get these washes on with this brush. And then we're going to actually go right down into the water to do the reflections. So now we're doing the reflections right in the water like this. And the reflections, as you can see, are a little bit wavier. 
you could take a little couple swipes with your fingernail like that. And that does wonders. And that's all. Look how good that looks. Okay, so we have some doorways here, some arched doorways. Then we have uh, one more over here. Let's get this one in over here. Voila! Look at that, how easy that is. And you can see how this is not super dark. This is like a medium, medium to dark wash that we're doing right now. Maybe a couple splashes. Loosen up a little bit. Put a couple splashes on your painting. Remember, it's fun. We're having fun here. No stress. Stress-free until the end of 2023. Let's have a little motto here at our Extreme Beginners videos. All right. There we go. Now, we're going to look around and say, what else can we do? Let's get in some yellow. And orange, maybe. And then let's get in some wash on our walls here. That's all you have to do. Mix up a little bit of that yellow and we'll just get a little bit of wash going on the walls here. Just like this. You can go you can go back and forth like this, you know. Cross hatching. And the reason we're doing this right now is we want variation. We don't want to have everything looking the same, so that's why we mix that little bit of color there. Some yellow, some red. Like that. That looks good. Then maybe over here, let's use a little green mixed in with that orange. Like this. Maybe that's too much. If you have an issue where you have too much muddy looking color, clean up a section of your palette like that. That's all you have to do and then start with another bit of color so that you can mix um, some green in there. I thought we'd have some green. Maybe a cooler and some like this with a little bit of that brownish gold color. That looks pretty good right there. So we have a little bit of this mix here. We're gonna change up a little bit. We're gonna make this a little cooler here. This is like a greenish color, cooler color, just like that. And don't worry about it. Try to just mix the colors the best you think you can do it. It's quite light, you can see, in tonal value. It's very light, this wash here, but it does have that greenish-blue color, right? I, I'm mixing a greenish-blue, which is cooler, and this is warmer. You can kind of see how this is more, that was more of like the reds and like a little bit of reddish color and gold and brown. And this over here is a little more greenish, cooler, greenish and blue. this and then we mix some of that same color down into the water mix that same wash right down into the water like so some of this reddish color comes down in here like so and you're really having a fun time with this here this is really fun then 
you can kind of see it's starting to really look good. We're getting lots of washes on the paper here. I'll put more of this reddish mix here. Reddish and brown over here on this wall. So there's a little bit of an, a um, sea wall here. And then maybe there's some bluish color under there like that. Look how good that looks. Warm and cool, warm and cool everywhere. Now let's get some green up here. We're going to mix some green. Olive green. Add brown to green and you get olive green. Like that. And there we go. We have our green shutters. Look how good that looks. And this is really fun too when you're doing architecture. When you, if you're doing architecture and you use like a flat brush like this, oh, you, you have it, you're all set. Look how good that looks. And it's just one or two brush strokes. One, two, your shutter is good for your windows. Then over here I see a dark. And again, if you've, uh, if you've seen this video and you went to the beginning of the video, you'll see brown. Uh, you'll see all the different dark colors. But this one's a dark color over here. So I'm just putting in some darks, rich darks like that. That is a doorway up here. And there's some darker darks over here too. So you can add some darks over here. And then a little darker yet, add some more black and brown and uh, some blue and red. Just mixing up some good darks. We're going to do the gondola. All with this, you're going to do the whole painting with this brush. Besides the first wash when you use a larger brush if you have it. If not, you can make do with this one for the whole painting. Okay, there we go. We have that, the gondola. And pick up some of this wash here. And we put the reflection in like this. How good does that look? Nice watery reflections in the water. A couple splashes. That looks good. Maybe a little bit of greenish blue here. Since we're now in the water area, let's put some blue in there. There we go. Okay. So we're doing, like I said, our middle darks and our darkest darks right now over the top of that really super light wash we did in the beginning. And uh, let's keep going here. Let's get in some of these darks here. On these windows, there's some dark darks there. And then over here too. And we don't forget the lights coming from here, this way. So your shadows are going to be um, under here and on this side. So that's going to that's going to be your shadow pattern, pretty much. And then over here too, let's get the shadow pattern over here. Okay, there we go. And the same thing here. And then we can even add in some darker darks here. Let's take some of that darker dark mix that we just mixed 
and we're going to go over here. This is like that. Have fun with your watercolors. Let the water flow and have a good time. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing over here. More darks up here. Over here, it starts like here. I'm just kind of trying to look back at my original painting. I did a small painting of this first. Like that. Just pour on some water there, splash on some water. If you find it's too much and you think, oh, I need to blot up a little bit, you can blot up some spots. Blot up some water if you have to. fun here, that's for sure. So I'm going to mix up a little more of that cooler green mix. And then maybe we're just going to add some of that over here. Maybe a little bit of other mixes too. You want to kind of mix up your colors a little bit. Don't make it all one color, you know. Mix up the... There's going to be a little bit of shadow over here too. From here, reflections down over here. up some greens for the windows over here. And maybe a little shadow over here. We have a shadow coming down over here. Some blue and green. A mixture of shadow colors. Like that. Maybe not. If you think a shadow doesn't look good, you can always remove it like that with a paper towel or a tissue. In this painting, the shadows should be this way over this way. So I think I probably had just miscalculated, you know, miscalculated a touch on that uh, shadow there. So that's why I wanted to lift that up quick. But we're really right now we're we're finishing up now. We're just doing some we're doing some water feel here. Take some of your your water out of your water bucket and just do some reflections like this across the painting. That's going to give you that feel of water. As well as some blue and green. 
wash. So mix up some yellow and or blue and green. This should be a little bit of brown over here. It's reflecting down this way. Then some darks maybe down on the bottom here. Like that. And then we do some like this, some vertical strokes like this. That gives us that feeling of water. I'm going to mix some brown, some orange. Just going to make a little bit of a orange and brown up here for the top of this wall. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry now. We've done a lot of washes now and now it's to the point where we can kind of Maybe put a couple splashes on here and there, like that. A couple of splashes up top, give it some t texture. We'll let this dry now, and uh, you can blow dry it. You know, you can take your blow dryer, blow dry it off now at this point to get all this secondary glazings that we just did, the darker darks and the middle tones. We get these all dry, and then the last thing we're going to do is add a little more lighter me medium tonal value washes for some shadowing here and there. But I think we're pretty much like 80% complete now. So now's a great time. We, we're going to let this dry 100%. And when we do that, it'll be much easier to go in and do a little bit of additional washes now over the top. And it won't disturb anything else that we've just done. So we want to leave this just the way it is. We're happy with it now. We have the water looking good in the bottom of the painting here with lots of water, some splashing here and there, reflections of these dark doorways down in the water for the most part we accomplished that. We, that looks pretty good. And then we can always take a tissue and go across like this and make some some lines across here like so. You can always do that to make it look better for water. And uh, maybe a couple of verticals too, like this. And then now we let this dry 100%. So we'll come back in about 15 minutes or so. I'm going to blow dry this and come back in about 15, 20 minutes. And we'll just finish up a few little details. Maybe the fence over here, we got we have to do some details on this fence a little bit. And then maybe a couple shadows here and there, maybe underneath the windows and the shutters and things. We'll we'll figure out some shadowing we need to do. But this looks good. I think we're almost like 90% done now. And you can kind of see how much fun we had. Just, if you can imagine, most of this is just really having a lot of fun with the watercolor washes, the darks and the lights. You know, we did the light wash first, let it dry 100%. And then now we just went over with the darks, doing our doorways, our doorway up here, our windows with the darks some medium washes with some shutters and some water. We did the water down here carefully, as we saw, but also free and fun. We splashed, you know, we had a good time doing the water and the water looks good. So let's not disturb anything else further. Let's take a break, let this dry, and we'll come back in like 15, 20 minutes or you can let it dry overnight and come back the next day, whatever you wanna do. You're the artist, you make that decision. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to take a 10, 15 minute break use the blow dryer, dry off whatever is still wet here. And then um, we'll, we'll finish up with the last, you know, couple washes of things we need to do to tidy it up and make it look a little bit better. But for right now, it's looking really good. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, we are going to get back in here and finish up and do our final details to this wonderful painting we have here. 
it's a Venice scene in Italy, the waterways. We have beautiful uh, apartments and, and uh, homes here along the waterways. Um, we have a gondola. We have some beautiful arched uh, doorways, beautiful windows, shutters. We have all kinds of interesting, um, beautiful washes and colors and tonal values in the darks and the lights and the medium tones. So this is really turning out to be a gorgeous painting. And of course, if you're just starting out and uh, you're just beginning to paint and maybe you've only been painting a half a year or three quarters of a year or a year, maybe even a couple of weeks, this is a painting you can do, absolutely. It's just a matter of getting your drawing roughed in in the beginning with your pencil marks, getting your arches in, your doorways, your arch doorways, a couple of your windows, and then you're off and running with your washes. And we cover every all the details here. So I always mention, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe here on the right-hand side down below the screen. Hit subscribe. This way you're uh, going to come back over and over again to my channel and just keep uh, working on the methods and techniques that I show here on this uh, channel. I basically pride myself on doing all the basics of watercolor so that if you're following me on a weekly basis or every other week and you're or just on a consistent basis, you're watching my videos and following along, practicing and painting when you can, drawing, practicing your drawing skills, you will absolutely get better at watercolor and you will be able to eventually be doing beautiful paintings. In the beginning, it's tough. Watercolor is not an easy medium. Anyone that says it is an easy medium to learn, they're, they're just, you know, basically... Um, maybe way overstating the reality of the situation. Watercolor is a difficult medium, no question about it. But if you're just practicing the fundamentals that I cover here on my channel, and you're just sticking with me here week after week, month after month, and year after year, um, you will progress and you will get better and you'll be able to create beautiful paintings without a doubt. That's definitely a fact. And I have many people that send me emails and they attach their paintings on the emails and I can't believe how great people are doing with their watercolors. It's amazing, actually. And I have people that have only been following me for three or four and five years, and they're creating paintings that took me 15 years to create. So I realize that the, t the methods and the te techniques that I'm showing here and teaching here on my channel, it's like I'm giving you the best of the best of my experiences over 15 years and kind of distilling them down and giving to, you know, sharing them with you each week all, you know, each week, each uh, time we do a tutorial, you're getting the same information over and over again so that you learn it much quicker. It took me a long time to kind of figure out a lot of things, but you don't have to take that time. I figured it out for you ahead of time. And if you're just following me on a weekly basis, you're going to learn the techniques, the methods to watercolor painting. You'll have a fun time and it'll take you a lot less time than it took me. Again, I have people that have been painting with me on here, here on YouTube for only th four or five years. They're doing paintings where they're sending them in and I'm opening them up and I can't tell if they're sending me my paintings or if it's their painting. So I just feel like they've mastered uh, a lot of the techniques and methods of watercolor very quickly so that it's almost as if they've caught up and within three, four, five years they've actually done about 15 years worth of work to get to that level. So I'm trust me, you're going to get there. Let's finish up this painting. And what we're going to do is just get some of the darker shadows over here. Let's do this fence over here. So we'll do a shadow on that side of the fence. The light's coming from here. We have our light insignia up here, as you can see, right there. So that's telling us that we need to put our shadows on the left side. I'm glad each and every one of you is joining along. We're having a fun journey here on, with watercolors. And it's fun. It's a fun medium. We can splash. You can have fun. You can go fast. You can take your time if you want. You can do whatever you want with watercolor and it's just, it's all good. I'm going to get some more shadow colors here. I'm not going to introduce any new colors. I want to kind of keep the so I'm going to do some shadows here under the windows, a little bit like this. So there's some shadows under there, like that.
here we needed to go a little darker. Our first wash wasn't dark enough when we did the reflection under here and the shadowing for the gondola. So now we do it a second time just to get it a little bit darker. And I think we're going to do a, a figure here. Let's do some figures. At least one at least. Let's do the gondola. Uh, let's do some warm and cool. Let's do some red here. Like that. Okay, let's get another shadow under here. Like that. If you have some space up here and you want to do a little bit of maybe a window or two, that's all, a couple of those. Maybe a little bit of green. And these can be more like very simple, quick indications of windows. But they're softer looking. See how I kind of we make them softer and lighter? Over here. And we can blot them up a little bit too with some tissue just to soften them up a little bit. And that looks really good. So we put a little something over here, but we didn't want to kind of get really into the darker darks and really super strong details like we did on these windows. We just did a couple quick, simple windows like that. Okay, and uh, let's again, we'll do a figure here. Let's do a Maybe we'll do a figure here. So let's do a figure on the gondola. Here we got a gentleman here. He's in the gondola. Like this. Black. Red, so we're going to make a mix of black and red, brown. And let's do that. We'll just do a figure, kind of like a carrot. Kind of thin at the bottom and then out like this. So you kind of make a carrot like that. And then you can dry off your brush on a tissue. So you don't have too much water in your brush, and then you can do the, the pole for the gondola and the water like that. Like that. And then you can do his reflection like this and the water. Add a little bit of water to that. Blot it up a little bit. How is how interesting is that? The figures in the painting make make it so beautiful and interesting, right? We have a gondola, and then we have our captain of the boat here, and he's got his cap on there, like so. Much more interesting now to have this in the painting makes a, a focal point really. So this is a really beautiful focal point right here, the gondola with the captain of the boat.
And that is really perfect. I think we're good, actually. I think this looks good. We're, let's leave it the way it is. We don't want to go too overboard and start doing too many details. That'll ruin it, actually. Let's leave it the way it is. And we'll actually call it a finished painting right now. We'll peel off the tape again, you know, probably once this dries. I'm going to let this dry 100% and then I'll peel off the tape. And it's a finished painting. And we can put it in a frame, mat it and frame it. It'll look beautiful. I always uh, suggest to everyone, please, mat and frame your paintings. If they come out good, they're, if, they look if they look good, put a mat and a frame on it. And start framing some of your paintings that are coming out good. You'd be surprised how beautiful when you put a mat and a frame on your paintings. They just look, they come to life. So, have fun with it when you have a good painting. Put a mat and frame on it. Hang it up in your house. Give it as a gift. Put it into a gallery exhibition for a competition somewhere in your local art schools. There's always art centers and art places that uh, promote art. I'm just doing a couple, just a little bit of dry brush here. See, I'm just doing dry brush. Not much water, no water, actually hardly any water at all. And I just scrub on the paper to make a little bit of some marks just to make things look interesting. Like this, like that. Okay, perfect. All right, we're gonna see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Thanks for all your beautiful comments, your encouragement, your thank yous, your positivity. Keeps me stoked to keep coming back week after week, month after month, and year after year here on YouTube. Everyone, thank you so much, especially those of you that have been following me for a long time. You know who you are. Thank you so much for always following me and sending all those kind comments over all this time. And uh, that really does encourage me to keep going, to keep painting, having fun here on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.